Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Death stinks. Not just the pain of grief, not just the existential problem of obliteration, nor the theological problem of the apparent overruling of a life-giving God by lesser forces. Every death involves certain practical problems, too, especially in a populated area. Like the problem my priest friend was facing, it fell to him to suck a dead mouse out of an air duct with a shop vac the day before Easter. Well, that's one way to get a dead thing out of a tight space. In sacred art, scenes of the resurrection invariably have Jesus looking sharp, draped in an immaculate robe of red and or white. And if he could rise from the dead, then you might figure he could have conjured up whatever clothing he deemed appropriate for the occasion. But that's not the way I picture it. He had been stripped of his garments immediately before he was nailed to the cross, and he left his burial shroud in the tomb where it belonged. So I imagine Jesus looked around and threw on the first clothes he could find. He may have just forgiven all humanity triumphed over death and the grave, and won for us everlasting life. But he was also still fully human, maybe at this point a little more fully human than the rest of us. He was still who he was, a worker who was brought up solving practical problems. The Son of God was still Joseph's son. So I imagine he threw on the first set of clothes he found, perhaps a 
spare set of dirty coveralls that had been left behind in the garden. So that's my best guess as to why Mary Magdalene, who had known him so well, mistook him for the gardener. And then she found out, as all of us do, that when you meet the risen Christ, he gives you a job to do. Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And since she did that job, we call her Apostle to the Apostles. For she was the first one to proclaim the good news of the resurrection of Jesus, the joy that even now continues to drive the church. I wonder, though, if they were entirely happy to hear the news. They were certainly sad that Jesus had died, but they knew they had let Jesus down in his darkest hour, and they had hidden themselves away because they were afraid that being identified as his followers could earn them the same fate that had befallen Jesus. The Romans had more than three crosses, you know, a lot more. It would have been so much easier for them to change their clothes and go back quietly to Galilee, go back to the familiar rhythms of work and home, to fade away back into anonymity. And there is ample precedent. There were a lot of itinerant teachers in those days, some of whom styled themselves as messianic figures. And when those teachers got themselves killed or debunked or rejected or just fell out of fashion, their followers would either go home or find someone else to follow. And indeed, even though Jesus' followers did listen to Mary Magdalene and come to the empty tomb, and they did believe that Jesus had risen, at least some of them did return to Galilee and to fishing. And Jesus met them there at work. He met them because their sacred work wasn't done. Meeting the risen Christ is the beginning, not the end. And he had a new job for them to do, a new set of clothes for them to try on. The unprecedented vocation of apostolic ministry, the responsibility to care for people, to show them and teach them that God is love, and God's love is so powerful that it forgives all our sins and overcomes death itself. A big job, but a joyful and fulfilling one, and one that anyone can do. Loving people, inspiring them, telling them God is gracious and loving, giving them spiritual nourishment is not just the work of the clergy. It's simply what you do naturally when you've met the risen Jesus, even if you might have initially mistaken him for someone else. And doing these holy things means solving many different practical problems. The cinders of Notre Dame have only just cooled. Undoubtedly, the smell of smoke lies heavy on those great stones. A monumental task awaits. And in our own backyard, the evil of racism is resurgent. Multiple African-American churches have been burned in the past weeks, and not by accident. Responding to that is a big and necessary job. And people are suffering the world over. As Jesus said, the poor are still with us. The world is still a broken place, still traumatized by fear and greed. The stink of death still haunts the world. But Jesus did something about it, and as his followers, so do we. Whenever we respond to the many different needs of the world with generosity and grace, we stand with Jesus and the saints as apostles, sharing the love of God with the world, even when that involves firing up the shop vac. For Christ has redeemed the whole universe. 
He fills all things just the way they are, including us, our whole beings, even those aspects of ourselves that feel less than holy. He sanctified a cross and a tomb, the tools of suffering and death, so he can certainly sanctify us. And he does, now and always. Jesus makes us more like him, more human, more holy, more compassionate, more alive. And we respond by sharing his glory with the world, just as Mary Magdalene did, both in word and in deed. Happy Easter.